for the lost city of Atlantis. It looks like we've got a crossing. Finally get back and take a look at that engine. I'm just going to show you around the dinghy, around the new high field. I'm Cindy, and this is Shell. We sold everything and set off on an adventure, living and cruising on a boat named Seashell. Click subscribe and sit back as we show you that it's possible for all of us to live an extraordinary life. We've been staying put in Bimini, Bahamas because of a potential major starboard engine issue. This isn't a bad place to be broken down, and we've been having a wonderful time here playing in the surrounding waters. However, we are getting anxious to cross back to Florida to get the engine looked at by our professional, and have been looking for a decent weather window. Good glorious morning. Today, we are going on an adventure. Where are we going? We're going to look for the lost city of Atlantis. Yay. Here we go. It's stressful when the wind's blowing and that you can't get it. This is a small target. I don't know. I feel a little stress every time we kind of... Yeah, my phone battery doesn't last very long now, so I'm restricted by the phone. Uh... Okay, well, good job, Sheldon. 3% when I caught it. 2% right now. <laughs> On to Atlantis we go. No need for directions when you're riding next to me. All of your affection is all I'll ever need. Cause we got that sunrise. Apple pies won't sleep tonight. We'll dive into the blue. We got that good rush. Young in love. Let's turn it up. Go around the world with you. We're not sure if we found the lost city of Atlantis, nor do we know if we had the exact spot for what is also called Bimini Road. We swam around the area a bit and we did see a row of symmetrically cut limestones that looked like they could have been man-made. But if you spend any time under the water in the Bahamas, you can see limestone breaks at right angles in many places. Or maybe we did find something and we decided not to film it and the Atlantean secret is safe with us. You'll have to go yourself to find out. Patrons get our exact dive and snorkel locations, so head over to our Patreon page and consider joining the crew. Good glorious afternoon. So it looks like we've got a crossing to get back to Florida. Finally, it's been three months. Finally get back and take a look at that engine with a, a real mechanic and see if we can't get it fixed. Gotta say I'm a little apprehensive. You know, going back on one engine we haven't really moved the boat in three months. I'm gonna go have to anchor in uh, Lake Worth because we don't have a window to go the next day outside to Stewart. 
so you know I'm gonna be on one engine in all that current trying you know backing down on the engine and if anything anything goes wrong in the night because it always goes wrong in the night you know I only got one engine to, to, to use to play with so slightly apprehensive in that regard but I think it's the right time it's the right window so we're gonna ship off but I'm gonna pull up the dinghy and then to get ready for tomorrow so in doing so I'm just gonna show you around the dinghy around the new high field and the modifications that I've done to the dinghy caddy so come on all right so the dinghy caddy the modifications we had to do for this high field so originally this dinghy caddy could hold at least the rated weight was for 400 pounds and this dinghy actually our old dinghy was pretty close to that limit but this dinghy is over this dinghy here with the engine probably weighs around 450 or so so just to be safe we needed to do mods on this to make sure that this could take the weight of this dinghy and the first thing we did so the weakest point in this is obviously the curves um, here on the on the uh, bottom of the dinghy that curves up so if this was going to bend or crush it would probably bend in this curve so what we did was put two supports right on the on the curves here to take way more weight so that this is no longer the weak point this is now the strongest point in the whole dinghy caddy we think we got the weight up to probably you know another hundred pounds or more for the, the weight limit on the on the dinghy caddy i don't want to go it, it could take more but i don't want to take any more weight than that simply because i don't know really what the swim platform is going to be able to handle or the transom for that matter the second thing we did was i was getting i was getting carpal tunnel syndrome pulling the dinghy up and down so I wanted a winch. To the winch, winch. And I got an electric winch. So this is a 2,000 pound winch. And I've got wire hooked up. I just disconnected, I got the wire and the, and the controller hooked up to a battery in the lazarette. And I just take it out and hook it up to this connector and it works fine. The other thing we did and this was something I would change uh, if I was to do it again. So we, we did this modification before we had the dinghy. And we, what we did to mount this, we put another bar up here so we could put a plate here to mount the winch. The problem with that is this is a fairly big console and now I've just moved I moved the whole davit inside closer to to that. So when we're in, you know, unsettled water, the dinghy can be hitting up against this bar. So if I had my time back, I wouldn't have put this bar here. I would have put another bar down here and put the winch down below this original bar here. So you can see I've got a, some foam pipe insulation so that if it touches this, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt the dinghy. And that's pretty much the mods we did. I'll hook this up and show you bringing the dinghy up with the, with the winch in a few minutes. We'll just take a quick look at the dinghy. So this high field is the CL340 GT Grand Touring. It is in the same line as all the 340s, the classic 340s. They come without a helm, without a seat, and they come with the, uh, the Euro seat, almost like we've had in the last dinghy with the metal bars coming up in the steering wheel on it. But this is the GT. What makes it the GT is this center console and that nice seat. So I'm gonna start with two things I don't like about the dinghy. First is space for cargo, if big cargo. Let's say we wanted to go for a dive. We got tanks, our vests, all of our dive gear. It does not, there's not a lot of floor space. This console takes up a lot of floor space. So if you're thinking about uh, you know carrying a lot of stuff all the time um, you know the other one with the other helm might be your style and if you got a, a real load of stuff you need to carry then maybe no console at all um, 
but it's fine for groceries and stuff like that. You can load it up around. And if you've got nothing in the seats, you can put stuff under the seats as well. The second thing I don't like, come here. High field, fix this if you can. These clamps that take the, uh, the stern light when you're running in the night. There's two clamps supposed to be here. This is on, hardly on. So anybody touches that, or I think my hand went and slipped or something I did with my leg and took the other one right out, right off. So that needs to be on a bit more securely. I'll figure out how to do that when I get back into Florida. Probably just a longer screw, but I don't want to go through the board. So that's two things I don't like about it. And that's pretty much all I don't like about it. So next, things I like about it. I like the high transom. So this has a long shaft engine because the transom is so high. On our last boat, our transom was so low, you know, the boat, you, you come to a stop and you, you would get water coming in, flooding into the back of the boat. It's not gonna sink, of course, because, you know, it's inflatable. But, you know, I like having that high transom. It just makes me feel a little bit more safe. In, uh, in bigger water. It has a bilge pump that is stuck to the into the side of the bottom, uh, the subfloor. So any water that gets in, it automatically pumps out. This seat is very comfortable. Even with both Cindy and I sitting here, um, there's hardly any bow rise when we go on plane. And it could be because of the, uh, there's some tabs on the back that extend the hull back a little more. So maybe that's why it doesn't. But it also could be that the fuel tank is up here too. So when it's full, there's a lot of weight up there. But this seat is really comfortable, really comfortable. Perfect distance for me. I'm a tall guy uh, for sitting here and having room for my legs. There's storage under here. And we just hold the batteries in here. We hold, you know, our uh, life jackets and stuff like that. Battery switches here. And it even has a little compartment here to put some, some stuff like your radio or sunglasses. sunglasses, things like that. The helm itself is, is comfortable. We've got electric start. We've got nav lights, mooring lights, bilge pump switches courtesy lights and uh, auxiliary buttons. There's a USB port here and a 12 volt, normal 12 volt car adapter there. There's room on the helm for GPS right here and it has an RPM gauge there. We're gonna get something to go there, I believe, or we may just get a suction cup mount for the phone, not sure. The console itself has a uh, big storage underneath, two access points. One is right here. There's a ton of space down there, but there's all kinds of electrical wiring and stuff, so you don't want to be too you want to be careful putting stuff down there. And there's storage here. And this holds a lock for me, and I've got a new Mantis dinghy anchor that we use for anchoring the dinghy. So there's storage up in front. It's pretty much all you can really get in there is the uh, fuel tank. You find this this might last us a couple weeks of bombing around. Pretty good. And the last thing we got here is a step with a pop-up cleat comes in handy. It does come in handy. And that's pretty much it. That's the Highfield CL340 GT. How I think do you we like, like it? it. We like it a lot better than our other boat, for sure. For sure. It's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a step up in terms of uh, luxury and quality, for sure. But it's, it's a total, it's a different boat, really. You know, it's a deeper V. Um, it's got a different ride. It's very dry ride compared to our, our other boat. It handles bigger, uh, bigger waves, bigger swells, and it doesn't bang like the other one. Like when you come off a wave, it's not like a like a big knock. It uh, kind of eases in. So it's uh, very impressed. Very nice boat. I like it. So I'll show you now putting it up on the uh, on the dinghy caddy, how that works. So people have asked, how do we like the dinghy caddy? And I'm not sure we really answered it on a video or not, but 
we do like it like it's it's a simple it's a simple unit it is not hard to install it come it, it comes off easy if i needed to store or like even to take it off to go get it modified it was two pins and it slipped out and took it away to get it modified but there are things i don't like about it and and one of them was that with a console you're going to it's going to hit your boat when you're trying to put it up and down in a in a you know sea with a little bit of uh, a little bit of swell or something on the on the back of the boat when you're putting it up the other thing I don't like about it, and it's mainly because of the console boats that I've had and the fact that I like to, to, to have the boat level when it's up. So, you know, some people can put their boat up and tilt it up like this um, and get it right up out of the water. But I like to have the boat level so that if it feels any water gets in, it goes back to the bilge pump and gets pumped overboard. So in heavy rains. Um, but the problem with that is, is I can't shorten these chains very much to bring the boat up out of the water so when she's out of the water um, she's not very high up past the swim platform the problem with that is in a following sea we've had the boat uh, get picked up underneath by waves and dropped on its chains might have happened you know two three four times um, and it has been too bad but I can see that it is, it would be a problem. Now, if it was a, if it happened a lot, I would probably just put, you know, uh, some sort of uh, attachments on the swim platform, and I could hook the dinghy down to the swim platform, so that if water came up underneath, it wouldn't be able to pick it up and drop it. But those are the only two things, really. I mean, it's easy up, easy down, and it uh, works well. Another thing to be really sure of, if you have one of these, is that the cleats here make sure they're back plated so first one we install it we installed it quick to get back to Canada but we hit some uh, fairly rough weather that kind of put a lot of strain uh, on this cleat and it actually tore uh, cracked some fiber guys here and tore the cleat right out um, so right now when we got back of course we there's a hole here now there's a metal plate aluminum plate up and under and that is keeps that solid so make sure you put a backing plate on your cleats when you're using this thing this chain is temporary until I get back to Florida to put it in a real cable to hook to so you can see here if it's a little bit rough on the back of the boat you're trying to put a dinghy up and down you can see how the dinghy would be like moving around probably banging into the end of this banging into this so if I didn't have this here and this this was down here I'd have this much more room to maneuver this is still in the way by the way but you can manage probably Don't let the winch take the weight of the dinghy. I always bring this up and I disconnect the winch and let it just sit. There's not a lot of weight this way anyway. Most of it, once it's up, it sits down and most of the weight is sitting on the platform. So there's not a ton of weight here. You heard it coming up, it strained in the midpoint, but then started, once it started getting up, it was easy to go. Give me, give me that Bimini Big Game has the Impossible Burger.
So that's it for our Atlantis adventure. We didn't see Aquaman at all. This is Bimini Cove. Yep, and we've totally enjoyed our stay here at Bimini Cove. Yeah. It's uh, been nice. It has a great pool, great beach. It's lots of sunshine fun in Bimini Cove. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. Give me, give me them good times, good times. Nothing, nothing but good vibes, good vibes. Give me, give me that sunshine, sunshine. Bring on the summertime. That night, the wind picked up from the north a little more than was forecast, causing us to be up all night checking the weather and trying to determine if we would leave in the morning. Ultimately, about an hour before we were about to leave, we called the crossing off. Some forecasts were calling for three footers on our beam, so we are holding off again for a better weather window. How long will we be waiting for that window? Stay tuned to find out. Summertime. I'm going to start with waiting for the plane to go by. Doesn't leave a ton of room here for like let's say we wanted to go diving and take our dive tanks and our, our CBDs and um, CBDs. Is that what it is? I'm thinking of my CBD oil. Is it CBDs? <laughs>